All right. Uh, good morning. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to have uh, uh, Alexander Carbello, professor from uh, Jifu University and Nagoya University, and also um, uh, a research expert at a Tier Four company. So uh, Alex has been working on, you know, uh, uh, autonomous vehicles uh, from 2011 and and way back on. Uh, uh, and also worked in R&D on LiDAR companies. And today he's going to give us a really exciting talk on, you know, what does it take to have autonomous driving under these adverse weather conditions? So how do we understand uh, LiDAR performance and how do we then enhance the perception uh, to bring in uh, the superpowers uh, in uh, LiDAR-based and other perception pipelines uh, under non-ideal conditions. So welcome, Alex. We are very excited to hear you talk today. Uh, uh, you're very kind, and thank you for, uh, so much for the uh, very nice introduction. So yeah, this is Alex. Um, my affiliations are very complicated. Uh, so I have a lab at Gifu University. I also am a, a guest uh, associate professor at uh, the University. I am also a member of um, uh, tier four as a research fellow. Um, there's also an, um, um, the associate the, the group of um, uh, research centers and um, uh, universities that we call the Autoware uh, Centers of Excellence. And I am uh, very happy to be representing um, uh, for the time in Nagoya University. At some point uh, with my students at Gifu University, we may also uh, uh, join forces. So, um, Hopefully, we will trans transition. Okay, so very quickly, um, as uh, Rahul was very kind to to introduce, uh, I've been working in um, robotics, especially in perception, and more particularly in, in more particularly in, within the lighters. So I've been passionate about uh, the topic of lighters. Um, all my research in the PSC, uh, also the work at um, the lighter company doing research and development. Um, and um, since 2017, joining Nagoya University uh, in the topics of uh, driving behavior, perception, uh, I guess what's lighters, and uh, robotics and self driving. Um, so, yeah, this is a summary of uh, what I'm doing. And um, yeah, the cat is there showing lighter spots. Um, and then I, when I took this video, I thought, oh, well, I blind my cat, but actually cats don't see uh, infrared, so it was uh, very fortunate. Um, okay, so I currently have two research groups. Um, one is, somehow this is weird, very weird. Um, I guess you're seeing a mess of, window, of, the, of the window here, right? So what is going on? Okay, hopefully this is okay. Can, can you see the screen correctly? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, somehow I'm seeing this uh, Zoom controls uh, popping in and out. Right, um, so um, we have two uh, research groups. Uh, one- You can right click on the drop down and, and make the Zoom hide floating. Yeah, it's hide supposedly floating. with uh, control Alt H disappears, but uh, without touching the keyboard, uh, reappears. So it's that being a yeah, bit weird. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it looks good. Yeah, I'm sorry for this. Uh, so we are um, um, in the topics of uh, driving behavior. Um, in driving behavior, I'm going to explain later uh, about uh, the perception of risk, then um, perception enhancement with a top particular emphasis on uh, uh, self-driving in adversarial conditions, and um, different tasks uh, regarding um, sensor performance and um, perception. So that's what we're doing at Nagoya University. And at Gifu University, we have a very young group, um, actually four students, um, all of them very passionate about um, the topic of self-driving. So we started um, using um, um, self-driving, uh, open source self-driving technologies such as AutoWare um, and uh, different uh, robots and uh, vehicles and uh, in driving simulators with the um, within three, uh, main topics of uh, autonomous driving, environmental understanding, and human uh, behavior. 
So uh, the topic of today, well, the agenda for today includes uh, a little bit of a summary of what we do at Nagoya University, COE, uh, and then the main topic of uh, self-driving under best weather conditions. So um, this is just a very uh, uh, rough, uh, rough summary of uh, uh, what we're here for so uh, and what technologies help us to do what we do. Um, then we have a uh, case in somehow is there. The animation was very slow. Um, we know the case is one of the um, uh, aspects of the of the of the keywords that brought a lot of change and have um, provide paved the the way to what we have in the um, self driving um, area. Um, it's not just the software, but uh, all around um, the software, the vehicle um, um, services, um, I am connectivity, and so on. For uh, some societies, especially the um, a, a, the the idea of uh, case uh, brings uh, a lot of benefits, but for some societies, especially for the Japanese one, uh, brings uh, a special relief to social issues. Um, it is not a secret that uh, the um, Japanese society is uh, is, is um, dealing with um, complicated and somehow the animation is not showing. Hmm. Somehow the animation didn't show. I meant to show this uh, animation, but uh, somehow it didn't like to appear. Um, okay, let me see if I, I don't hide it. Okay, so there it is. Um, the prognostics for uh, the uh, serious shrinkage of the young generation and the uh, enlargement of the um, uh, elderly population are uh, not um, to um, uh, are not suitable to 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 keep in the background or to ignore it. It's it's a serious problem that we uh, are facing now that we we continue to face it in for several years. Um, let me just refer to the one without this there. Um, so uh, we want to have. Uh, um, solutions for uh, this and this includes not only having more more uh, healthy um, strong grandparents grandmothers but the consequences of this meaning that for example they are healthy but their driving abilities uh, decrease so therefore um, they cannot drive uh, their vehicles uh, which in a perfect society with mobility available everywhere of course will not be a problem but um, that's not the case um, having an older population means that we have a choice of drivers and also the phenomena of the population. Um, so no more mobility, no more uh, services for areas that uh, have no, uh, pardon my, uh, black uh, um, conception here, but uh, as a, as a, an area doesn't have any more appealing uh, because there's almost nobody living there. So why, why to spend money uh, sending the bus or the taxi there? That's, uh, of course, a very dark way to, to see things, but that's reality. Uh, there is a place in Nagoya where the bus comes once a week. Uh, so what's the point? Uh, if you get sick and you need to go to the hospital anytime and then uh, nobody's around you. So this is a very serious problem and, and that's why um, we want to find solutions uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so among those solutions, uh, we have um, self-driving technologies and uh, in particular, um, the efforts that joins us in the auto air COE, um, self open source self-driving uh, solutions that includes uh, not only um, um, the um, autonomous driving technology itself, uh, like auto air, but also understanding how humans drive and uh, try to um, make a system that um, also takes as an uh, example the um, uh, the human as um, as the core example or as a um, instructor or as a teacher uh, that guides the autonomous uh, system the Having a person on a vehicle not a not, not, not a conventional robot but having a person uh, sitting in the car, not behind the wheel, but just uh, sitting, enjoying the drive, um, means that we have to, of course, uh, have considerations for um, um, comfort, the risk, the perception of risk. And 
and the precession of matrix is not just the um, you know uh, visually what you can measure with the sensors. Uh, this uh, truck is coming very closely, and the other car was passing very closely and fast, but also is the perception of risk. Okay, this truck is uh, clearly um, breaking hard and uh, throwing a lot of smoke. While it seems very dangerous, then uh, for the driver, the most uh, suitable and uh, way to escape this uh, risky situation is to escape to the right. But at the same time, another car was passing by. So um, a risky situation coming and a risky situation to also immediately. Um, that's... Um, uh, something that we want to mitigate and um, among all the things that we have to deal with uh, in the jungle of um, the vehicles, uh, multiple cars uh, driven autonomously or uh, manually driven by humans, we also have to deal with um, nature, the nature as, uh, as difficult as it is, um, the weather phenomena. Uh, I'm going to come back to the weather phenomena in a, in a moment. Um, so we have several systems that are able to uh, very accurately detect and predict trajectories for uh, individual objects, but the association between the objects are um, not so much uh, considered. For example, you have uh, three vehicles stopping uh, at an intersection with a traffic light, uh, the traffic light in red, and while there is a pedestrian. So um, while a detection will uh, find three vehicles, a pedestrian, and maybe the traffic light, uh, their semantics, why that happens to be uh, there, uh, are normally ignored, uh, or the meaning. So three vehicles are stopped at a traffic light uh, and the pedestrian is crossing because, of course, the uh, pedestrian uh, crossing, the zebra, the zebra crossings, uh, the, the pedestrian's uh, uh, traffic light is green, so he or she can cross while other cars have to wait. Um, so there is a connection between the cars, the traffic uh, light, the position, the pedestrians, and so on. Uh, this kind of things also uh, needs, uh, needs to be considered. And um, the um, perception from the vehicle uh, alone is uh, not enough. So we have uh, several uh, additional uh, perception capabilities. For example, um, having um, roadside perception units, uh, which includes uh, not only the possibility to exchange information with the cars, but also sensors and so on. Um, but still, uh, these uh, road perceptions uh, units, even if they're in a privileged lo location, they may expect, uh, they may be affected by different occlusions and even uh, the, the weather phenomena. So that's uh, an introduction. Uh, let me just jump into... Um, some of the activities that we have been doing in Nagoya University, and then we then uh, continue with the self-driving under adverse weather. So uh, in Nagoya University, um, the discussion um, includes several laboratories, particular the one I am affiliated, um, still affiliated to, to is uh, the Behavior Signal Processing Lab. So uh, we have uh, several different groups, including uh, autonomous driving, driving behavior, and interaction, which also have to deal with the, with the car, uh, a re-admission group that uh, takes into account um, multiple um, artificial intelligence uh, technologies uh, with a specific application in vehicles, and two additional groups, which are speech and music, and finally, the uh, sports behavior. Sports meaning um, not only uh, centered in human, but, all, but, but also in general uh, um, animal uh, behavior. So how uh, groups of uh, teams of people uh, join together and make a, an attack against another, uh, the opposite team, uh, all the team conformations, et cetera, which even if it is from the sports side can help model how pedestrians uh, decide to cross the street to go to say the station and the different group formation that happens and so on, which can bring uh, additional insights uh, for the vehicle planning to make proper decisions uh, as, as to whether um, to yield uh, or the pedestrian or to continue uh, understanding that the pedestrian is not going to cross the road. So uh, we have been doing um, general uh, self-driving, including all the um, different uh, elements of it. Um, and 
um, in addition, end-to-end um, -end driving, uh, so going in a simple neural network uh, from perception to action, and uh, including um, individual tasks, for example, branching. Um, so uh, we have been also uh, doing that in um, uh, different robots and also in driving simulators. Um, for um, several years uh, already, in Nagoya University's uh, our research group, the prefer the favorite uh, driving simulator has been Carla. Um, now the that the AW simulator is also uh, available, we also are considering um, how to include that into uh, different uh, research topics. Wow, I'm very sorry. The presentation decided to stop. Please hold a second. I'm very sorry for the uh, interruption. I hope that you can see my uh, screen. Yeah, it looks good. I'm sorry. Um, within the topic of uh, driving behavior, um, one of the interesting um, considerations uh, in our lab is to not to ignore uh, that there is a human sitting behind the wheel. So take that into account to improve driving. So we um, studied what is called the subjective risk, what makes a person feel um, uncomfortable or ha have a sensation of uh, danger of risk inside the vehicle. And um, by understanding that and take into account which factors trigger that kind of um, subjective response, um, we created a vehicle controller that is personalized. So imagine that your car, um, for example, you um, like to drive um, slowly, um, safely, um, in a conscious manner. So the car is adapted to your personality, so to, to your driving style, so that you don't have a strong perception of risk. Or uh, perhaps you like to drive a little bit faster. Um, so uh, maybe you feel um, annoyed if the other vehicles around you are uh, too slow. So uh, then the idea is how to realize that in a manner that is also safe. We work on uh, um, that topic and uh, realize a um, vehicle um, a controller based on MPC, but taking into account uh, personalization. Um, the other topics that we uh, also work in, uh, uh, regarding also a subjective um, risk uh, is um, being able to analyze scenes and predict whether the scene is going to be dangerous or not according to the personalization, or say if according to multiple impressions of multiple uh, annotators. Uh, so for example, this road is very narrow. Uh, in this part, the frame was red, but now it's blue, uh, means that um, the danger, dangerous, uh, dangerous situation uh, changed. But it's also surrounded by a lot of pedestrians. So um, the uh, seeing judgment changes from uh, safe to uh, dangerous. And now this intersection is blind, so um, it's also uh, considered dangerous. And finally, we are also uh, doing um, a, what, is what we call the holistic um, um, risk uh, that takes into account uh, both dimensions, uh, objective and subjective. The other um, Think that, oh, well, this is uh, driving behavior. I'm sorry for the uh, sake of time. I'm going to um, mention it briefly. But the idea is to be able to create a, an AI engine that um, uh, using um, um, learning from the expert drivers is able to drive a vehicle um, even in better, in a, with better performance than uh, um, normal, normal drivers. And particularly in this uh, curve, we compare the AI agent with a Nelder. Uh, in a mandatory stop, and the mandatory stop uh, was uh, properly uh, considered by the expert driver 
in the AI engine, but not for the by the elderly who uh, ignored. Um, that happens, and um, we know that uh, we, if we if we can have this kind of agency, it can also uh, monitor the performance of um, not only humans but also uh, other AI agents like Autoware, for example. That's um, okay. Something is not going well with this PowerPoint. Um, I mentioned the topic of. Uh, uh, me, modeling uh, objects and their and their relations. So we have been doing that with um, graph neural networks, um, and uh, by um, making an abstraction instead of uh, seeing the pixels of objects, uh, and we can just concentrate on there is there are this many cars as I mentioned in the example before three cars and an intersection with traffic light and a pedestrian. So we can create a graph and also land that graph of objects with the actual uh, physical surroundings, for example, the map. Uh, so there is another graph that uh, corresponds to the map level and the what we call the actual la la layer. And uh, that creates an abstraction of that particular situation. So imagine that instead of seeing the, um, whatever, uh, the Mazda, the Honda, the Toyota uh, cars, all of them red, for example, for some reason, instead of uh, concentrating in that and uh, we can, abstract that kind of situation and bring that into, for example, a driving sim simulator. So we can go from real to uh, synthetic. So that's also uh, some work that we have done uh, based on this uh, modeling. Um, so you can have uh, multiple uh, configurations for uh, uh, instantaneous scenario creation from real data. And uh, what we want to do now is to um, uh, go from um, the graph configuration into a text description uh, in order to explain what is going on and also associate that to the uh, um, corresponding uh, level of risk. The other things that we have been doing is um, uh, auto um, HMI for autonomous vehicles. So how to uh, interact with a car um, uh, using uh, speech, and the, the car is also responding. And um, um, also uh, use uh, gaze. So for example, in this line is the gaze vector. It's projected into the space, into the 3D point cloud, for example, which is already annotated. So the person can ask the car, what is that? And the car, without having to specify what is that building, what is that red building? Um, in, in, without having to specify details about uh, the object of interest, just based from the from gaze information, we can update that kind of information. Uh, and of course, uh, we have been um, um, contributing uh, to Autoware. Um, Autoware was um, uh, originally uh, born at Nagoya University, and uh, we continue uh, trying to bring uh, our research into um, the development of Autoware. Uh, perhaps not as um, much as ac and actively as we used to be um, um, before, but with the introduction of uh, Autoware Universe, uh, the possibilities for the students and researchers to contribute without having to spend much time in uh, dealing with uh, very strict rules uh, are uh, more uh, positive. So we are start uh, we are already resumed the 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 efforts. Um, I already mentioned Autoware um, from Nagoya and also the um, Autoware deployed in different cases. I'm not going to skip this slide. Okay, and the uh, other things, the final acti activity that we do is uh, basically do uh, outreach uh, education activities, um, bringing Autoware to uh, the um, the community and uh, in particular myself have been uh, um, doing the several activities with China, still um, running um, uh, current activity with China. And uh, the idea is to propagate that within the, uh, the Autoware Centers of Excellence so that we can also reach multiple uh, users uh, globally. Okay. Finally, the topic of today. I'm very sorry for the uh, preamble. So, um, yeah, the problem is uh, very serious, um, adverse weather. And uh, you can see here cars crashing without stop. Why? Uh, you have the, in this case, you have the preference uh, 
privileged view from the side of the road and anybody will say, well, why are they not stopping? But of course, that's not the same as being inside the car uh, with uh, almost no visibility. And then uh, you're actually a few meters uh, when the situation is uh, right on, on top of you. And no matter how hard you jam the brakes, uh, you are not, your car is never stopping. So, uh, and you also may say, okay, this is uh, the problem of... Um, uh, snowy countries. Yeah, well, the Japan, you you can say it's, it's an, a snowy country, but it's, uh, it's not as um, serious uh, situation as the uh, northern part of uh, America uh, or Finland, for example. Uh, but even in um, areas where traditionally it doesn't snow so much, like Tokyo, uh, there have been several collisions due to uh, icing in the road. Uh, Hokkaido in Japan, North Japan, is... Um, has recorded the uh, lowest temperatures in, in the country, like minus 41 degrees, uh, with um, a total of 148 uh, days of snowfall. So uh, even if um, we have um, kind of a more southern uh, location, but still we have to worry about these uh, cases. And not only, of course, not only snow, uh, the cases of um, uh, typhoon, et cetera, will be, um, also of uh, important consideration. But what is important just to uh, abstract from this is that um, there are some services that need to happen no matter the weather. Uh, in part the particular case of Hokkaido, um, there are several uh, older people living, um, are needing um, health uh, in home, uh, health care, and uh, to have the uh, care providers to visit them. And that's um, services cannot stop. So for them, especially winter, it's a very dangerous uh, season. And the, um, there's have been several injuries and death uh, for those people who are, have been doing the effort to um, provide the service that uh, dealers need. Uh, so yeah, what can we do in from the... Um, uh, perception of driving um, side, and again, um, we need to understand what uh, what uh, what is going uh, on. So, um, with lidars alone, uh, is not enough. Uh, with cameras alone, of course, it's not enough. Um, and the vehicle controller uh, may be also be affected. Existing software, uh, level two software that are supposed to be customized uh, in operation for uh, such uh, latitudes uh, do not work well. Um, say in this case, um, um, video taken by my student, my former student. Um, so the car is um, doing um, lane keep assistance and uh, of course is failing. Um, and yeah, so, so, so many things that uh, need to be uh, tuned, even in existing um, um, already uh, production systems. Um, so snow, okay, we have that. Uh, contamination, we have to deal with that. And smoke, um, dynamic range issues. And um, let's assume that even it's not raining, but after the rain, we have uh, water uh, puddles. So the water puddles will also um, affect the whole perception, even if it is not raining, actually. So uh, to deal uh, with that, um, we have been working in several um, uh, aspects. One is perception enhancement. And perception enhancement uh, has been, um, at least from the point of view of um, uh, GANs and um, synthetic image generation, have been considered before uh, to generate fake snowy conditions or to generate um, a fake um, dark conditions. Yes, yeah, true. But uh, from uh, basically uh, from a pair, Im pair uh, images. So that's uh, the conventional approach of being uh, using uh, pair um, wear removal. So for example, assume that you have this uh, the scene, uh, then um, artificially you add uh, snow uh, sorry, you had snow or whatever weather condition. In this case, is, is uh, fog. Um, and then you have a pair, and then you can uh, learn, um, train a system, and it's able to uh, get past that. Of course, you can also generate a fake rain, um, uh, rainy situations like this. 
uh, and actually this one is uh, snow. It's supposed to be snow, fake snow. Um, not so much um, snowy like, uh, winter like. Uh, anyway, um, from that, from pair uh, system removal, it's already been done. Um, uh, but has the, tra the the problem that the the the, the situation is not realistic. Uh, the 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 modifying a real clear image uh, to add fake um, weather phenomena in order to uh, uh, train the 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 enhancement um, has not pr proven um, very um, proven uh, with any um, realistic uh, results. So what we instead chose to do is unpaired or um, untangled um, wear removal. So we have a different um, scenes with different weather. So the, my student drove his car uh, in China in multiple weathers. So it, he didn't drive the same road in across the whole seasons, no. Uh, we, he captured samples of, okay, this is, this is foggy, uh, this is rainy. Um, this is another uh, snowy day and so on. So the idea that uh, he had was to um, get the style from um, um, an image and transfer that to be able to uh, get past the, um, the phenomena. So uh, in his initial implementation, basically he, he focused on the uh, enhancement of um, uh, hazy images. So the approach uh, followed was um, a cycle gun so the idea was to go from um, the clear uh, image uh, and um, add the, um, in that case, um, have a, what is called the weather layer um, and uh, have um, reconstructed clear or uh, going to try to um, go to the reconstruction of the clear uh, image and um, also have the weather in this case, the hazy image and uh, again, try to uh, get past the, the 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 weather in order to reconstruct the the image without the the weather phenomena. So um, what uh, he did then uh, was to evaluate the the proposal with two uh, alternatives. One is to generate uh, the kind of fake uh, hazy conditions uh, using the um, uh, meteorological optical range method that affects the image propo in proportion to the um, uh, expected visibility and um, uh, maximum visibility range. And in this case, it was done with uh, cityscapes. And uh, also he captured, as I mentioned, um, uh, for the topic of um, comparing a pair uh, versus unpaired, the um, another data set of uh, clear, rainy, hazy, and snowy conditions so Alex, oh, I have a yes. question. Uh, do you yeah, have please. the ground truth with LIDAR data also, or this is just camera? In this research is basically image, uh, is basically okay. this. But uh, that will, you are actually pointing out towards uh, wh what we are uh, going to try to do. Okay. Uh, in, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, right, yeah. Currently, yeah, we, um, we did this in China. Actually it was during the, you know, uh, in the middle of Corona, uh, he was not able to come to Japan because of the travel bans. Uh, so the research need to to progress. So he had a good camera, the has a car and the the wheel, and um, he drove a lot, uh, captured several thousands of scenes, and um, with different weather. And that uh, has been the 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 training uh, the, the training material for his uh, method. So as I mentioned, uh, we have the paired approach uh, by just basically uh, generating this kind of uh, fake uh, conditions. So that's uh, uh, the kind of um, fake conditions, fake uh, hazy conditions that he's able to do. And uh, after the uh, removal, of course, there will be some artifacts, but um, the approach uh, seems to be doing uh, very well. And uh, also the uh, object detection has been doing also nice. Um, now, um, with the idea of um, disentangle uh, or unpaired, um, he wanted to explore um, with his data set the possibility to go from uh, any weather to any weather. So um, if you have um, not only hazy conditions, but um, rainy or snowy, 
uh, be able to uh, clear all this um, phenomena. So he had uh, also proposed um, in uh, his um, most recent journal uh, the um, multiple cycle guns. Um, so um, as you can see, there will be uh, real um, images in uh, different weather layers and is able then to uh, go um, by generating fake uh, weather images and also uh, fake clear images and uh, with the aim of uh, removing the, the phenomena in the, the final layer. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, this is untangled. So it, that didn't ha it didn't happen that this red car what happened to be in all the, the seasons, no. Uh, this actually uh, is the real clear image and by ap applying uh, this uh, multiple cycle gun, a byproduct is the generation of the fake images that is are necessary for the, the training of the uh, weather removal. So the important thing is that there is a, an important uh, aspect. Uh, the generation is quite realistic. Um, so the style transfer is doing nicely. And then, uh, for example, the um, uh, accumulation of snow, the uh, changing of the of the color of the road, even in accumulation of snow in the top of the of the car may happen in this uh, kind of uh, transfer. And so the important thing is okay. So one now that we have uh, get the style from uh, unpaired images from uh, a rich uh, data set, then the transformation going from uh, real weather to what will be enhanced. Uh, or call it like fake clear. Uh, so going from foggy to clear, going from rainy to clear, going to from snowy to, <clears throat> well, actually not so bad, but not so snowy, maybe it's what we have to say. Um, still getting rid of um, the accumulation of snow uh, is, is a complicated task. But um, this, uh, this um, work has been doing uh, quite nice in the topic of a perception has me. What we want to do uh, from now in this uh, topic is uh, uh, to in include additional um, sensor modalities and perhaps uh, temporal features to um, uh, achieve the final uh, goal of uh, his research, which is uh, detection of pedestrians under adverse weather conditions. The generation of fake clear images have the, um, the consequence that uh, some parts of the image may change. For example, there is uh, uh, supposedly this should be a, a bridge, uh, an underpass, an overpass uh, over there in the background, in the hazy part. But um, the rendering is uh, all green, so maybe for maybe it's uh, nice looking like that. But uh, maybe it's not the the initial not the initial configuration of the of the of the environment. So that kind of things, uh, of course, may happen, and uh, the also an intended, an intended consequences may be the the uh, pedestrians, especially those far away, might disappear. So that's something that we want to uh, avoid by considering multiple modalities and also temporal features. We have been also working in the um, the same uh, topic of perception enhancement, but with lidars. So um, the our student was uh, taking, uh, I am afraid to say that it's not our own work because we don't have any snow data yet, uh, but he was using the Canadian Adverse uh, Driving Conditions data set and uh, recently the, um, what's the name of this? Uh, WADS, um, that's also from North America, but I don't recall exactly the, the acronym, the meaning of the acronym. Um, Different data set that include uh, snow. The WADS uh, is interesting because uh, they took the effort to annotate uh, using the image data, but annotate the point cloud as to where in the point cloud uh, is the snow. So they have uh, semantic data uh, in the in the point cloud, including the uh, location of the uh, snow. So uh, by using uh, these two data sets, he's been working in uh, the topic of how to create a, a, a point cloud enhancement uh, using different uh, approaches. Uh, currently, uh, here I'm just showing a few um, uh, experimental, uh, not experimental, but uh, some um, evaluation of the student uh, with existing state-of-the-art uh, statistical uh, removal. 
he is working in a similar approach as before with a, um, a cycle gun to get rid of the snow uh, and um, enhance the, the point cloud. We also have been working with other sensors. Uh, here I'm showing the case of the thermal uh, sensor uh, inside a weather chamber. Uh, so uh, you can see a, key, a case uh, that the car is looking at a very strong light source. And I'm, I'm afraid this is not the snow case, but uh, looking at a very strong light source. Uh, so a normal, a normal camera, a normal RGB camera will not be able to um, see more or perhaps if it has a nice um, uh, uh, dynamic range like a steer force um, camera, it may uh, uh, perhaps be not so um, affected. But the thermal, because of uh, its uh, configuration, the type of um, thing that it sees, uh, the bolometers um, being calibrated to detect uh, radiation in the 2000 to 8000 uh, nanometers and so on. So uh, it's able to see the actually the light source uh, without being so much affected. Um, so if you have a thermal image, uh, so perhaps applying uh, classical uh, computer vision uh, uh, approaches, for example, the Retinex or uh, Biospire Retina, um, you be able to classify the objects there. So here is a person that was classified with a traditional object detector, but after enhancing, uh, so the car, uh, that actually two cars in the, the, the person were correctly detected. So that um, points to ah, the next slide. Uh, somehow is not so very, these transitions are not very so very kind. Okay, um, it's about, so multiple sensors evaluations um, that we are trying to uh, do. And um, among those evaluations include the uh, adverse weathers. So hmm, there is a video that is not showing. Okay. Um, so we have um, done experiments in a um, um, large weather chamber um, in Japan. It's 200 meters long, three lanes uh, with the um, actual standard width of a uh, lane in, Jap in Japan under rainy, foggy, and strong light conditions. And uh, all the data is uh, for, we took it from multiple sensors, but the evaluation was actually for uh, LIDARs. Uh, so this weather chamber um, did not have any uh, snowy conditions. There are other um, weather chambers, uh, indoor weather chambers that uh, in Japan that uh, like the um, Cryonospheric uh, weather chamber in the um, um, what is that? Uh, um, for in the National Institute of Disaster uh, Research, and so they have this kind of um, facilities, but not suitable for car because the weather chamber is actually too small even for the car to to move. But uh, we are considering different options for for that. Um, and uh, for those options and for um, going to uh, actually uh, capture the, um, um, the weather uh, from multiple uh, modalities, from multiple type of sensors, we have already prepared um, a perception system. As you can see, the illustration includes um, several 360 degree perception uh, systems. Uh, so LIDARs. Uh, 360 degree cameras, a 360 degree rig of thermal cameras, and uh, lidars are in multiple uh, spectrum. And um, actually, not so much thinking on the weather phenomena, but in for a researcher and a student, but we also uh, throw in an array of uh, microphones. So um, while it could be interesting to see uh, whether uh, there is a, a, any uh, uh, contribution of microphones uh, in under serious or bare weather conditions, we are currently in mild, simple, uh, normal weather, weather conditions. We're using microphones to be able to detect objects, uh, particularly uh, other vehicles, emergency vehicles in the current um, in the current research. Um, possibly, in um, the sound may produce may provide. Um, uh, an interesting uh, source of information under bad weather conditions where you cannot see, where your sensors cannot let you uh, 
go beyond the phenomena, but uh, a more humble uh, sensor like the microphone may be able to, to produce the information that you need. So that's um, what we are uh, proposing, we have, and um, the system has just become uh, available. We are doing some uh, calibrations, so for calibrations of the 360 system, we have um, um, config created a um, thermal a thermal calibration board that has uh, the normal black and white uh, checker pattern, but also has um, patches uh, of uh, sorry thermal pads, so that the, the thermal camera will be able to see that also uh, from its unique uh, uh, properties. While the normal camera and the lidar will not see, but the um, checker board. And uh, what I'm trying to uh, really desperately to find uh, a way uh, to to get um, to get that. It's not playing the video. I'm very sorry. Um, we have been talking with the uh, the company is um, 360 degree radar um, because the radar, um, as I expected to show you in this video, but somehow it's not playing, um, has a strong immunity to. Um, several uh, forms of contamination and of course the weather etc so um, that's what we want to uh, add to put a crown into what we what we have for this system then uh, go and capture data and uh, make the data available for everybody okay and yeah it seems that the presentation is not going well yeah after this, uh, I have just a conclusion coming. Um, perhaps I may take a question because the I have to re re restop, restart this. Yeah, we can take any questions from the audience. So, so please ask questions at this point. Uh, hello, Dr. Alexander. Hey, hello. Hello, uh, my name is Ren Zhong. I'm a PhD student of Wuhan State. Uh, my advisor is Dr. Wei Xi. Oh, nice. uh, I'm very interested in your data set library. <laughs> and uh, I have tried to send an email to you, seems to you, okay. to, to, to ask for the uh, access, uh, access to the data set, but I uh, okay. haven't got, mm. Mm. I haven't got so, any response. Okay, let, so. let me let me check on that. Uh, maybe you can send me directly a, an email. Uh, let me try to put this uh, slide. Okay. Um, my contact information is in the very last uh, slide. Uh, okay. There you are. Uh, maybe you can uh, contact me. Uh, so to see what is going on. Maybe uh, I'm not receiving the emails. Um, okay. I'm I'm very sorry for the for the uh, issue. Oh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, should but, I send um, you let, let me tell you that one? what we have uh, currently available mm -hmm. is uh, this uh, what's called Libre data set. It's just the lighters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just the lighters. Mm -hmm. The other one that uh, we are um, uh, uh, putting the um, uh, effort is, uh, of course, it's, uh, the sensors are there, but the effort to capture the data in um, uh, multiple weathers is still uh, pending. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, let me just tell you that uh, what we have um, is um, the possibilities to, well, we already have uh, some project with uh, Finland. So the plan is to go to a city in Finland called Sudankla. It's, uh, it's in the Arctic Circle um, with the uh, sensor array that I showed you and um, drive under winter, uh, winter conditions. And um, they have um, an, actually a track uh, for uh, especially for self-driving vehicles, uh, it's conditioned with uh, 5G and um, other sensors uh, on the side of the road. Um, they are uh, very eager to uh, find people who uh, to to cooperate. So we have um, um, already submitted a proposal uh, project, um, project with them and uh, waiting for the results of the of the um, funding um, and also uh, different alternatives for for joining together. Um, or the topic that we have in mind is um, while we are capturing this data, we would like to get also the human side. So how is um, expert driver? I uh, will not, uh, I've been doing the driving for the Libre data set. I will not say that I'm the, the professional driver. 
Uh, so how a professional driver, he or she takes uh, the weather, the uh, information that he is a, or she is able to perceive uh, and uh, make this, the, the car drives uh, safely. So that's what we want to understand in order to uh, create better uh, systems uh, to monitor the performance and help the autonomous uh, driving software. Um, we also have some uh, option to collaborate in the Roadview project in, in Europe uh, with Professor um, uh, Aaron Erden. Um, so um, the possibility is also that uh, we may also be um, sharing our data uh, with them uh, uh, possible. Yeah, so um, are there any more questions? And let me just, uh, for the sake of completeness, um, they didn't show before. Um, so uh, this answer is um, quite amazing, uh, if you know it. Um, and is the video from the uh, NAFTEC uh, that they have uh, been sharing. Um, so NAFTEC, uh, if you are familiar with um, them, uh, uh, is based, um, it's a radar company, uh, and then they joined forces with Oxbotica, uh, the spin off the, of the Oxford uh, Robotics Institute. So uh, Professor Paul Newman is also one of the members uh, of, this com of this company. And uh, you can see this, um, you may not see, um, you can see that their emphasis actually is uh, a sensor is able to work in all conditions. It's not a small sensor, it's quite a large. Um, um, I remember I think the, the, the big one that has been shown in this video is about um, 30 centimeters and it's about 20 kilos. And so on. it's like the old uh, Belodyne HDL 64. They have been working on a smaller one, uh, but it's, what is amazing is that they have these array of multiple antennas of uh, radars spinning in five hertz. Uh, they are working in a faster version, but you can see it all muddy and still is able to perceive and, uh, and go con continue uh, doing its, its work. So um, it's radar. Okay, so it's able to um, produce uh, information in some detail of the world, uh, but not the whole thing that we uh, require in um, our area. So we need to, um, the, the idea will be uh, to combine multiple modalities as we uh, have been planning um, to be able to create better systems that understand the world from multiple uh, sources or multiple spectra uh, and to be able to pass, um, get past the, 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 the challenges imposed by um, adverse weather phenomena. So, so Alex, what's the difference in the output from, like if you had a 360 LiDAR versus this radar? Right, so uh, as, radar, as radar is, uh, and because it's rotating, uh, so you get kind of the, the same um, idea of uh, all coverage and the distance um, uh, for um, perhaps a course um, compared to the LiDAR, uh, 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 a little bit more coarse um, resolution because the, that radar is not so much uh, like dense like a lighter, uh, but you're going to get distance uh, because it's a radar. You and let me you remember they are using um, uh, a band of sixty to sixty two or sixty one um, and gigahertz. So they are using also Doppler. Um, you may also get uh, what they call the for a for the light radars that you can get also a velocity, um, you can get that from uh, that uh, radar. But as I mentioned, uh, it is uh, low resolution and compared to the three D lidar, uh, uh, I will say that they say the vertical spread, the uh, vertical field of view is uh, kind of narrow. Mm -hmm. You may compare it better with the with the two D lidar, right? Uh, it's able to produce uh, a side of the world. But in this in this case, um, um, the um, NAFTEC uh, CIR uh, has a, a vertical view of um, say five I forgot five to ten degrees not so much, uh, but not dense. So um, yeah. 
Uh, Alex, would it would it be fair to say also to Raul's question, what's the difference between the lidar and the radar? One works when you throw mud on it, and one doesn't. Oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> thank you, David. Yeah, uh, throw mud on the lidar, on the lidar, and then no operation. Uh, of course, lidars are not meant to get dirty um, because the actual the. Uh, optical uh, the i mean the, the spectral um uh 800 or 900 nanometers uh is not conditioned to uh go beyond the the dirt uh that there will be an opti an obstacle that they they are maybe interested in detecting but for light for the radar the wavelength is larger and for in that case the the dirt is not important it's invisible alex i was going to also add it looked it was interesting there that in that last video there they spoke to localization with the radar as well if i understood correctly I, I mean object detection or collision avoidance even when occluded or covered with snow or what have you is nice but uh, so they're actually working on trying to get some level of granularity for localization from the radar as well is that right yeah so um the Case that I mentioned uh, now, the uh, NAFTEC, um, in uh, in addition to its multiple features, has a very long range. They claim that as several hundred meters uh, of uh, range performance, um, it's been used as a sensor for um, security for obvious for intrusion detection uh, in airports, etc. But uh, because even with some granularity, as you say. Um, uh, it can even detect coarsely some objects in, of around the environment, so they can also uh, serve as cues for um, um, create maps and for uh, doing localization. Or say if the accuracy of the uh, range is compatible uh, with that of the lidar, then once you have a say a lidar map, uh, use the radar uh, for localization inside the three point cloud. Yeah, it's also uh, this should be possible. Thank you. There is a question from Simon that uh, seems uh, that his uh, microphone is uh, with some problems. He is asking that for the weather removal, is there any way to measure how confident the system is at producing a correct image or even a pixel to pixel confidence, uh, something like max logic or anomaly detection, maybe? Uh, thank you, Simon. Um, that's a very fair uh, uh, observation, and it, there may be the, the, an interesting way to, to consider that. Um, as I shown before, um, there are some uh, results that are not so, um, um, okay, here. Um, uh, some, some cases that, for example, render, um, still the, the scene is realistic and respects most of the, the initial structure, uh, the um, traffic, the, the, sorry, the headlamps, the, um, white lines in the road, the even the fence is there, uh, but some things were transformed, like the uh, ve vegetation, for example, from one to the other. Um, but still, the, the transfer was uh, okay. So uh, we have some metrics. Actually, we are applying some uh, metrics to uh, compare the um, uh, fairness of the of the image. Um, uh, what is the um, point signal to noise uh, ratio uh, measures. Uh, we, ha we have really two, uh, two or three uh, measures to compare the, um, uh, the, the uh, multiple images. But uh, because we have, um, say, uh, unpaired uh, images, uh, so it is uh, a little bit tricky to, to, to say, OK, um, this is the initial real image and this is the reconstructed image. So there's a lot of uh, comparison. There's a, a lot of things that are uh, equivalent, but um, say color changes, um, um, say small patches of green that shouldn't be in the road uh, may happen. Um, so how much uh, do, will that affect the, uh, the scoring? So um, you know, what is what we have already um, with um, we have evaluated, but yeah, it's it's a very interesting uh, observation to use um, what you you mentioned. Uh, there is something, David. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you, David. Has you done? And th also thank you, uh, Simon. Uh, will there be any uh, additional question?
All right. I think I think this was a really great talk, uh, Alex, with a lot of uh, experimental views and and really identifying some very difficult challenges with perception. Thank you so much. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, and and those of you all that are interested in uh, follow ups, uh, you have uh, Alex's email, or feel free to email me, and I'll connect you all. Uh, and uh, please join us for our next. Uh, uh, autoware uh, seminar that will be in about two weeks time thank you so much thanks alex thank you. thank you for having me today thank you have a good day bye goodbye